So let me talk about a situation. And uh, as I said, I'm assuming that everybody has an idea about databases. And I assume that you would have definitely worked with either MySQL or Microsoft SQL Server or say Postgres. Postgres SQL. Huh. Is there anyone who has not worked with database? I don't think so. Right? So what we understand is that these are called relational databases. Right? And why do we call them relational databases? Because they have entities, which are tables. And these tables have relations with each other. Right? So for example, there can be a customer table, there can be an order table, there can be a transaction table. So a customer will place one or, one or more orders and an order will have one or more transactions. Mm -hmm. This customer can also be connected to say geography table, right? And this orders may also be connected to say a products table. This is how an ER model looks like, entity relationship model looks like. And every table has a primary key, has a primary key, and it has a set of attributes. And each of these attributes are of some data type. They will be either of integer or of float or of character, string, date, whatever, right? That's what is a table made up of. So, and, and think about this. Um, you are in a business, you're joined a company. It's a startup. It's a very, in a very early stages. And it has just started off picking up business. You set up a database and this database is of a, uh, say 2 GB in size, in storage. So your business, since it is a very initial stage, early stage startup, you get maybe 10 transactions, 20 transactions, 50 transactions a day. So you are really not worried your database is sufficient enough to take care of uh, all the traffic. But suppose uh, the, the startup got some funding, right? And uh, the startup has started growing, is, has started doing, doing good. So the transactions say per day, which were somewhere around 50 has become 5,000. And uh, your, your, and suddenly your database seems to be filling up, right? And uh, if the database is filling up, if the database uh, gets completely exhausted, then any new customer transaction, which the customer is doing from the app, for example, say Swiggy, you're trying to uh, place order from Swiggy, and that information, uh, the order information gets stored in the database. If the database is already full, you really can't, customer can't place orders or that order placing process will be extremely slow, right? So what happens with this, your database being filled up, your customers are getting affected. Your application is getting affected and the customers have started rating low, the experience of the application. At the launch, uh, at the launch, the application had ratings of 4.7, 4.8 out of 5. And now the ratings have dropped to around 2.2, 2.3. And that's what has made the CEO concerned. And the CEO calls in the CTO and tells that uh, boss sees that this, this uh, seems like there's some problem. Uh, the customer ratings are dropping. Uh, customers aren't liking the app experience. Uh, you need to fix this problem. Go ahead and do it. So the CTO thinks about, okay, what could be the problem? He calls in, he calls in a team meeting. He calls in his architects and uh, all the developers and analysts. And he puts up this question, guys, what's happening? What's the problem? The app experience is going bad. Please uh, do a root cause analysis. Please investigate and let me know. Let's think what could we do to solve this problem? So, uh, the senior guy in the team, he went and did some analysis and came back with this, uh, came back with some of these points. Number one, same thing. He said, see, as the business has grown, we are not the same company what we were, say, one year ago. We were a small company. We were getting lesser transactions. We were okay with a smaller database. Today, the transactions are rising, has, has grown 10x, 100x, right? So the database is starting to fill up. So today we stand at around 1.8, 1.9 GB, and this will get filled up in a week. What should we do? So the CTO says, simple, go ahead, let's acquire more hardware. So let's upgrade 
instead of 2 GB, let's make it as 10 GB. So, okay, you make it as 10 GB and suddenly a lot of space opens up. But what will happen? Eventually, if 2 GB takes one month to fill up, 10 GB, considering the same rate of growth, will take five months to fill up. Or if the uh, growth rate is, uh, is uh, exponential, maybe within two months it gets filled up. So we are not solving the problem, we are just delaying the problem. We're moving the problem two months ahead, right? We will get into the same situation after two months. And then we'll have to keep on adding more and more hardware, more and more storage. It's like you keep connecting more and more hard disks. So you are solving the problem of storage for then, but only temporarily. The problem is deferred into the future. So is this, is this something which uh, an acceptable solution? No. Uh, CTOs will say that, okay, we will get into the same problem after some time. So this is not solving the problem. What do we do? What else? Is, there, is this the only problem that my database is getting filled up? So the senior guy also tells that, hey, there's one more problem. As we, as we, as we have been growing, we have been hiring a lot of analysts, a lot of data analysts in our team. And the job of these data analysts to day in and day out, write queries, complex queries, joins, group by, window, aggregation, whatever, prepare reports, consume that in say Power BI or Tableau or Excel, and then send those reports or insights or dashboards to the end customers. So what is happening is the same database, this, is the, this database remains the same. The, uh, earlier, this database was only getting hit by customer queries, right? Customer is placing an order, customer is looking into their order history, et cetera. But the same database is now also getting hit by our data analysts. And uh, suppose currently we have a team of 10 analysts. All these 10 analysts are hitting these tables and sort of concurrently writing heavy duty SQL queries. When, when, do we, when we say heavy duty SQL queries, what are we doing? We are joining table A, join table B, join table C, join table D. Then we are doing some group by aggregation. Then we are doing some window, some, some lead lag, maybe some, um, some uh, uh, rank, dense rank. All these are, are heavy duty operations, which kind of lock up the tables unless your query is finished. Com compared to a query, which is hit by a customer, all the customer would, I, I as a customer on Swiggy, I mo mostly I'll be looking at my order history. That's it. So at most, my query will be select star from say uh, this transaction uh, orders table where customer ID equal to something. It's a simple query. That's it. Only one table is getting hit. But look at think about a query which is being hit by a data analyst. Uh, something something select something something group by some Windows function. Then you bunch of joins. As you do joins and as your table volume is increasing, these joins will become slower and slower and slower. And add on that not one analyst, but 10 analysts are writing such heavy duty queries. This database is going to go bust. It will say, thank you. I can't serve you, right? It's a, uh, it's a database, which is getting, which is getting, uh, this is coming under pressure of all already there were customer requests, but now we are, uh, we are uh, worsening the problem because we are not just hitting the database, but we are hitting the database, not with simple queries like customers, but very complex queries which are being hit by data analysts. And that is our job. Me, you, uh, anyone at uh, anyone at any uh, project at Tridens, uh, you would see that, okay, these are the kind of queries we write. So the point is, uh, this database is getting choked, right? So that is also the problem because I, the, our analysts are holding up to the database. Customer queries are not hitting to the database or it is the customer queries are getting delayed. And that is where the customer is finding a hung screen on their mobile or the web. It's being very slow. And that is where the customer experience is getting bad and the customers are saying, boss, this app sucks. Right? So what's the solution? So now the CTO is pretty clear. Okay, I got it. So what should we do? What are the possible options? So one option we already saw, saw that keep on increasing the hardware. You can keep on increasing, but till what? It will always have a physical limit. Okay. So if we can't increase the hardware, then can we reduce the data itself? The data which is there in the OLTP database, the or the, or the relational database, uh, let's do an analysis. And the CTO says that, okay, think about it. 
how much in history do the customers go, really go, right? Is historical data even important to sit in our primary database? Is it important to be it, it, there? If it is not used, I'm just making that data sit there for no reason. That's the premise which the CTO says. Think about it. And the senior guy went and did analysis and said that, hey, you are right. I think it seems like customers generally are not even going few months back. I, I think we, we can keep six months worth of data in our primary database. And uh, shall we delete the rest of them? CTO says, no, 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 you can't do that. Because history is important and we need to do historical analysis. Our analysts, what do they do? They do historical analysis. Right? They need to understand trends. They need to do some time series. They need to do some uh, dashboards, slicing, dicing. So they, they, what they need is historical data. So you can't simply delete. It's valuable for me. It's valuable data. I can't delete anything. Okay, then let's move somewhere. <coughs> so then, what do then uh, the idea? The next idea came in that okay, let's move data beyond six months, right? On a rolling basis, right? So if you are on first uh, of Jan. So you will be move, uh, removing data uh, 30th June and before. And you move it to some other place. So that at a point of time, your primary database is always constant in terms of storage size. It's constant, say, at a 10 GB or something. Because uh, if six-month data is worth, say, suppose 50 GB or 100 GB, be it. But more than six months, I'm going to move it to somewhere else. And that somewhere else, and this, this OLTP, which we talked about, this relational, this ER model database, this is your, also your primary data source, or it is also called as the OLTP, online transactional processing system. From here, we move the data to some other place, some other place, which would be what? Which would have also be a database. So we are moving the data, we are lifting the data from here and shifting to here. Okay. So this, uh, this uh, will make sure that my space is freed up and new customer requests when it is coming in, it is uh, sitting in, uh, it is sitting in the database. So your database uh, size continuously increasing and rapidly increasing is taken care of. So first problem is taken care of. Also, the second problem is also taken care of because now the historical data has moved to some other location. So your analyst's traffic is not hitting your OLTP primary database, but it is now hitting the secondary, the other database. So your customer problem, your size problem is solved. It is freed up. And your analysts hitting heavy duty, uh, hitting and running heavy duty queries is also deflected from the primary database to other database, which is this one. Right? So problem solved. Everybody is happy. But then after some time, the analysts came in and say that, hey, your, the queries are very slow here. So uh, this is not going to work because what are we doing now? We are moving all the history and every day, every day new data is getting stored into that other uh, or that other uh, database or that other location, right? So that size is continuously increasing. And, do, and if that database is exactly same as it's like a snapshot of this database, so we have moved the problem to somewhere else. So. Uh, the challenge, the CEO is happy, but the CTO is still not happy because the CTO knows that I have just moved the problem from one place to other. The problem is again reflecting at the other place. Although customers are not hitting this database, analysts are hitting, but we know that analysts are hitting really, really heavy duty queries. So analysts are not get, now getting unhappy that, hey, what's the problem? Right? So now how to solve this problem? So the idea is that when you are moving that, uh, so uh, the, the idea is that when you were, uh, the model, the database, which was designed in your OLTP system, it was designed based on ER modeling techniques. And ER modeling technique, one of the important consideration is the idea of normalization or breaking down the tables. So you have customer tables, separate order tables, separate product tables, separate some vendor table separate, all these are, these are all, the, the idea is keep breaking down the tables as much as possible to ensure that there is least redundancy in the data. And the, the tables which are broken down establish relationships between them. That's the idea of normalization. And that works in every kind of OLTP system. But that same modeling 
is not working when uh, my data is moved to the other location why it is not working because going back to the uh, going back to the sql optimization problem if you have the more joins you have in your query the slower your query is going to become that's the thumb rule the idea is can we reduce joins can we can we uh, do with less number of tables compared to what we had in oldb the ideal would be a single table which has all the information i need think about uh, say if you had to do perform some processing in sql what do you do you join and bring everything as a part of a single view or a single table and then do you you do whatever you want so ultimately with join we are bringing data together into a single place so why not have a data in a single place itself in a single table itself but again that also is a problem because that table is going to be an immensely huge table with lot of redundancy that kind of a table or that kind of a model is a completely denormalized model where the the there is a single or a very few flat tables so the sweet spot is somewhere in between so the 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 sweet spot is stay somewhere between say er model or completely normalized tables on the other side you have completely denormalized tables stay somewhere in between and that is where that that sweet uh, sweet spot is where dimensional modeling comes into picture or famously called as designing and implementation of star schema right so what we have is an er schema er model on the ex uh, extreme other side is the denormalized single flat table both are problems so the idea is can we stay somewhere in between can we reduce the number of tables which were there in the er model but not bring it to one which is also the other extreme problem so with reducing the tables we are reducing the joins and with reducing the joins we bring in optimization in querying so the data analyst will start feeling that your of your queries are now speeding up because we have reduced joins that's one of the core ideas of dimensional modeling star schema which leads to a different database which we call as data warehouse so somebody would say that okay you already have a database why do you need a data warehouse we need data warehouse because the needs of the the job what a data warehouse is designed for is very different from the task for which a database is designed for a, a relational database or an oltb database is for most of the crud operations create read update delete which happens in any application customers will create records customer will delete records customer will update records all this the oltb databases are most efficient at but what they are not efficient at what they are not efficient is high speed reads and high volume reads they, they are not good at reading data at high speed and high volume and that read optimized system is what data warehouses data warehouses are designed for high speed and high volume reads they are designed to ensure that you have lesser and lesser joins and that is the advantage of star schema which uh, is a core part or integral part of a data warehouse so if somebody asks that okay why data warehouse you can give these reasons and uh, and and that is where the entire job of a data engineer comes into picture which is etl or elt which means extract data from the source transform somewhere in between load into the destination but as against that the modern way of doing this in snowflake databricks these kind of platform says extract data from the source load straight away into the destination which is snowflake or databricks then transform and then finally load into the final or destination tables eltl okay so uh, and ask any data engineer or if you are a data engineer you can you, you can very quickly relate to what i am talking to, talking about and this is exactly what it is move data from x to y and data needs to be put into y this y is a database data warehouse which is designed in a different way compared to how you will design an oltp it is designed 
uh, with uh, the uh, it has been implemented with uh, star schema and when you think about star schema star schema has something called fact in between and dimensions around that comes like this so a, a dimensional model always goes with the question what is this object area what is that you want to analyze if your subject area is sales is your subject area delivery is your subject area employee attrition is your subject area financial performance what is your subject area based on that subject area you design kpis or metrics or facts like customer count customer csat customer retention rate bounce rate right click to uh, this one uh, what is said that the ctr click through rate all these are kpis metrics right and we keep the metrics in the fact table along with keys or IDs, which will connect me to the different dimension tables. Dimension tables are like customer dimension, product dimension, vendor dimension, any other dimension, location dimension, calendar dimension, time dimension. All these are dimensions. So you see, when you're moving data from an OLTP, it is not lift and shift. You copy data from that OLTP uh, tables and simply shift to the destination. You have to modify the table structure you need to clean up the data you need to add more columns you need to make the data warehouse neat and clean you need to tackle all the quality issues you need to ensure there are proper keys and everything you need to ensure with the right granularity of data all those things you need to ensure before you uh, you successfully implement a, a data warehouse on top of this i mean once suppose cto uh, understood that okay i think we are at a right time that we need to implement a data warehouse because again it's uh oltp systems are not cutting it and this data warehouse systems they are also called as oap or online analytical processing systems right so this uh if, suppose everything is done uh, they, they implemented star schema they start they implemented etl and the data got loaded and the analysts are also reasonably happy that okay the performance has increased but again, this is it, this is having historical data. It is storing historical data. So this the size of data warehouse is going to continuously keep on growing. Again, the same problem. After some time, they will hit. That even after all these optimizations, it still appears that the data. Just give me a moment. So yeah, so it appears that the, the data warehouse is still uh, is not uh, is again falling into performance optimization, uh, performance optimization challenges. So how do we tackle? So how do we tackle the new performance challenges? Because after some time, again, the because the data grows, even the, even the reduced number of joints could be a problem. What can be done? That is where one more uh, innovation came into picture. And this innovation was column-based storage or columnar storage systems. So uh, what do we what do we know? We know that uh, uh, the databases, the relational databases, they store data one row at a time. But as against that, this innovation, this innovation said that hey, instead of storing data data as rows, store the data as columns. It will improve the search performance. Now, what is the idea behind this? I'll quickly show you. Uh, although this is something which is also part of the masterclass video. But I'll give you a very quick, uh, uh, very quick idea about this one. Just uh, give me a quick moment. So I'm just opening a opening a, an Excel sheet here, and this Excel sheet, if you see, is uh, uh, having some piece of information, which has some transactions. So you have order, you have product, uh, you have sales amount, you have quantity, discount, profit amount. So uh, think about a relational database. A relational database is going to store the information like this. This is the your row one, then this is your row two, this is your row two. And this is your row three. And you see the, the data storage is anyways continuous. This is how 
your memory would look like, right? Uh, your your storage system. So if somebody says that give me the sum, give me the sum of uh, sales. So to calculate sum of sales, you are starting from this location and you will be doing one, two, three, three hops to get to this. Then one, two, three. Uh, then you get to three hops. Then move to the next ID, which is this one, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You took eleven hops to get to the important, you get to the values you want. This one, this one, and this one, which you will sum up and then give the result. Now think about the other way of storing. The other way of storing is column R, which means I store one column at a time. So how will I store this? I will store it like this. I hope you're understanding, right? So I'm, I'm going to store it like this. Sorry. Yes. So now, if somebody asks me, asks that, okay, get me the sum total of uh, 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 or total sales. What I'll we'll do is from you start here, one hop, you get here, two, three. Three hops versus 11 hops. Because once you're here, all you have to do is because all the values are in continuous memory locations. If you see here, the values are in discrete uh, here, then you are there, they are here. And so you have to hop around to get to the data, fetch the data point. Here, once you are at the first point, all you have to do is zap. One shot, you are able to select all the data and sum it up. And that works really, really well for all analytical purposes because in analytics, all I'm doing is sum, min, max, average. So uh, you want all the data which you want to aggregate to be together. That's one, because there the data is, is, is in proximity. So your processing is fast. And second, this allows you to achieve very high degree of compression. So uh, there are compression techniques, run length encoding, and uh, there are a few more. You don't need to know about it. All uh, you need to understand is that along with the proximity of the data points, it also helps you to gain high degree of compression. You can compress the data. So, and you get the compression to the tune of 95%, which means if you were able to, if originally you were able to, uh, store, uh, store, say, if you had, say, a uh, 100 GB data, that gets stored as 5 GB. So you still have 95 GB worth of data you can store. So storage, uh, proximity, compression. These are the three things you get with this new kind of idea called column-based storage. And if you hear about Parquet, ORC, Avro, right, these are nothing but column-based storage formats. And this was another key moment where which brought in the revolution in the world of data warehouses, right? So uh, star schema, along with change in the way of storage, which is column storage, that's what brought the in, uh, made data warehouses uh, much more affordable, much more likable, and more companies could start implementing data warehouses successfully. So they were good.